Thanks for listening to English Go podcast. If you'd like to listen without adverts, read episode transcripts, or listen to extra bonus episodes, please check the description for more details. Have you ever Googled your own name? Prepare for a shock because your personal info, including addresses and phone numbers, is all out there. It's all harvested by data brokers and sold legally. Aura is a personal digital security service that scans the internet for your sensitive information and provides a full suite of privacy enhancing tools. For a limited time, Aura is offering listeners a 14 day free trial at aura.com slash safety. That's A U R A dot com slash safety to learn more and activate the 14 day trial period. Right, I suppose I should begin to tell you about my holiday in Japan recently. Uh, when my parents came over to visit, because we got up to quite a lot, and I'm sure I've got some interesting tales to tell that will prove to be good、um, listening practice for you, and also what, like, shed some light on the way British people think,、um, highlight some differences、uh, between the two countries. So, yeah, I think it'll pr- be pretty interesting. And by the way, shed some light is an idiom that just means、um, provide more information about something, make something a bit clearer. Right, so our journey begins with me meeting my parents at the airport.、Um, that was all pretty standard.、Um, Japanese airports are very similar to British airports, they're very similar to every airport that I've ever been to, really.、Um, and as soon as I met up with my parents, they were. Well, they were pretty tired. It's a long flight,、um, UK to Japan. I think if you get a direct flight, maybe it's about 13, 14 hours, perhaps. I mean, 12, 13 hours, I think, direct flights.、Um, that's from London、uh, to Tokyo. But、uh, I live much closer, a lot, lot closer to Birmingham,、uh, Birmingham Airport. So, you can't get any direct flights from Birmingham Airport to Tokyo. You always have to stop in another country. And this is usually France or Germany or Amsterdam. And my parents stopped in France because they flew with Air France.、Um, anyway, that's, when it's not a direct flight, it is about 14 or 15 hours or something. It's a long time, long flight. So, they were tired and they were thirsty and they wanted a drink. So, I took them to a vending machine. In case you don't know,、um, I'm sure you probably, probably do, because even people who aren't really that interested in Japan seem to know that there are an, there are an awful lot of vending machines in Japan. They are absolutely everywhere. They're indoors, they're outside, they're on the top of mountains. I'm not joking.、Um, they're on beaches. Sometimes they're everywhere, these vending machines.、Um, and they sell many things. You know, they sell drinks. Sometimes they sell like instant noodles and tobacco and beer and all these crazy things. But typically,、uh, lots of drinks, vending machines.、Um, we don't have anything like that in England. We have vending machines, normally like inside a shopping center, maybe sometimes inside a workplace. And we have two types. One sells drinks, and the other sells snacks.、Um, and the snacks are like crisps or like chocolate bars,、um, sometimes like,、um, like a flapjack. Do you know what a flapjack is? N- I haven't seen any flapjacks in Japan since I've been here. That's a good, maybe it's a British thing only. I don't know. Do they have them in America? Who knows? Flapjacks. It's like a sort of I think of flapjacks as a sort of breakfasty thing. I don't know if they are, but like it's a lot of like oats and sometimes maybe nuts mixed together with honey and I don't know, like a sort of breakfast bar thing. I like flapjacks. I want one. <laughs> anyway, I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten about flapjacks. I'd forgotten they existed.、Um, but yeah,、um, so I took them to a vending machine and it's just funny watching them look at the vending machine. Because they're like, I want water. Which one is water? Because there are so many like, different drinks, and none of them just say in English, like, water. So it's like, you, you just don't have any clue. 
You don't have any idea. Haven't got a clue. Um, so I knew that they were dehydrated. Um, dehydrated as when you don't have enough water and um, you haven't drank enough water for a long time and it makes your body feel not very nice. Um, and also when you're flying, you don't you don't drink enough when you're flying, apparently. They don't give you enough water to drink. Um, and that's one of the things that makes you feel jet lag. Um, you know, like tired from your flying and difficult adjusting to um, another country's time zone, another country's time. Um, so the idea is to help with jet lag, that you have something that helps you rehydrate. So you've got dehydration, rehydration. Um, get some water into your system. So I bought them. It's like a sports sort of drink. So it's got a bit of salt in and it's got stuff in <laughs> that's supposed to make you rehydrate. Over here, it's called Pockery Sweat, which is, to most English people, or most English-speaking people, a disgusting name for a drink. Um, Japanese people don't seem to mind it, of course, uh, but to uh, English-speaking people, it's disgusting. No one wants to drink a bottle with the words sweat on it at all. Um, because it's like, <laughs> it makes you think you're drinking sweat, which is a very nasty idea, isn't it? Um, but anyway, uh, they gave it a go. And they l sort of liked it, but it was a bit too sweet. Uh, but anyway, it you know, it helps you rehydrate. So that was their first experience of a Japanese vending machine. Um, then we got some, like, it's like a rail pass, like a rail card. And I was really surprised by this rail card. So you, you pay, if, if you're, if you're um, a tourist going to Japan, you can pay a lot of money. Um, and you get this card that gives you unlimited travel, unlimited travel on all Japan rail, um, trains and fer not all of them actually most japan rail trains and ferries and buses as well so um if you're going to be doing a lot of traveling uh, when you come to japan it's it can work out cheaper if you get these tickets if you uh, get these like rail passes although i will say that the prices have uh, already gone up and it's not such a good deal anymore so i don't think it will be popular anymore but that's a separate topic anyway. So we waited in a queue and we picked up these rail passes. And I thought it was going to be like a piece of plastic. Um, and it wasn't. It was a piece of card, like a really flimsy piece of card, like the kind of train ticket that you just sort of use once and then throw away. And um, because it wasn't card and it had to last for two weeks, two whole weeks... Um, we kept having problems with it, which was annoying. So you'd try and put it into a ticket gate, and a ticket gate couldn't read the ticket, and you had to go and speak to someone. And it just became so annoying that we had to travel to Tokyo one day to get it fixed and get another pass. Um, so it's a really stupid idea. I can't believe they don't give you a plastic uh, rail card, um, and you get like this little flimsy paper one because it must annoy everyone you know it must annoy all of the staff at the station because you, they get all these foreigners coming up to them saying in english like i don't know my, my card's not working what's going on um and and when i when i was asking the staff about it they seemed to be like quite used to it like they just look at the date and it's like uh yeah yeah that that, that problem again and just go on through it's okay that sort of uh, reaction um anyway I've, I've ended up speaking about <laughs> transport in Japan um, instead of talking about the holiday. That's that's interesting, actually, because I don't think we've got any system like that in England. I don't think we've got some system where you can, uh, you know, pay for this, like, unlimited travel card if you're a tourist in England, which is a shame. We should have something like that. Um, I think the best thing you can get is probably just, like, a some kind of travel pass for the for the you know the period for the amount of time that you're over um here here well in england um 
But it's not easy because it's not all linked together. Like the bus company is one bus company and that bus company only operates in one area. Um, so I live, uh, well, in England, I lived in a place called the West Midlands and the West Midlands has a West Midlands travel company and those are West Midlands buses. But then the train is another company and then if you go to London, then another bus. So if you buy a bus pass unlimited bus pass for the West Midlands you can't use it in London, you can't use it in Manchester, so to be honest it wouldn't even work <laughs> maybe the government could get all the companies to agree to such a thing, but um, yeah, I think if if you come to England uh, to travel you've just got to just buy you know bus tickets whenever you travel and buy train tickets whenever you travel no, I don't think there's a good deal you can get but don't take my word for it do some research before you come um, but generally whenever, whenever I've had friends coming over, uh, to England, they, they've never said like, oh, by the way, I managed to get a special pass, the special, uh, unlimited travel pass. They're always just, uh, just buying tickets like everyone else does in England. And there's another difference, to be honest. Um, the, ex the expense of travel, the cost of travel in England is crazy, like unbelievable prices. Um, the last, I think, well, I told you about this, didn't I? When I had to go to London to get my visa, I couldn't believe how much the, the train tickets keep going up, the cost of the tickets every year. Um, when I went to London to get my train, my train, my train visa, when I went to, <laughs> to, to, when I went to London to get my visa so I could come to Japan, it was 80 pounds to go there and back. 80 pounds. Um, what's that in dollars? who knows I don't I don't use dollars um, but I have just looked it up for you it's around a hundred US dollars um, it's just crazy and this is the normal train this isn't like a high speed train or some special service or you know or first class uh, it's just like a, a regular train um, but in Japan the travel is incredibly cheap by comparison i think i can i think i can travel um from here all the way to the center of tokyo and it will take me about an hour um and it's about what maybe like seven pounds so you've got like seven pounds oh sorry that's just one way isn't it so okay 14 pounds 14 pounds versus 80 pounds for pretty much the same journey um it's unbelievable. So there, there's a warning for you. Um, traveling in England is very expensive. There is a cheap way to travel in England. And that's if you get... If you, if you don't mind tra uh, traveling on a bus, on a coach. Um, not a bus, a coach. Um, what's the difference between a bus and a coach? Well, <laughs> a coach, I think, is l longer probably, than a bus, and um, it's got more seats on it than a bus. Like, a bus has all, like, special seats for, like, I don't know, for prams um, and shopping areas for, you know, put your shopping in and stuff like that. But a coach, a coach is just seats, 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 seats all the way down on each side. Um, so you can get this thing. Ah, oh, this is going to confuse everyone now. There's this coach called the Megabus. <laughs> and they're really cheap to travel on. Um, if you get the right days, I think I've travelled uh, to London for about £7 or £12. But it takes a lot longer. It's slow. Um, so like the train. If I get the train from Birmingham to L London Euston Station, it's about, well, like I say, it's £80 there and back. But on the Megabus, you can get it, I think it, it's between, say, around £12 and £30, depending on the time you travel or something like that, or when you book your, how early you book, you book your ticket. Um, but it does take a long time. On the train, it's about an hour and a half. Um, by bus, by coach, it's about, um, it's about three hours, I think, three and a half hours. Four hours, maybe, because uh, the, the bus has to go some like weird ways to pick up people. Not the bus, the coach. It's because it's called Mega Bus. It should be called Mega Coach, the company. But um, yeah, so my advice is 
check different options and if you don't mind taking a slightly longer route then yeah you can get um this mega bus coach thing uh i don't know why i've ended up talking about traveling in england i've gone completely off topic and uh i'm going to leave it there for now before i go even further off topic um so i was trying to give you some travel tips at the end rent a car <laughs> that's probably the easiest thing you can do but not in london don't try and drive in london it's um in fact don't try and drive in any of the major cities i got fined recently i was driving around birmingham and they've changed things and they've got these like uh, it's, it's so hard to, to explain like these zones that you're not supposed to drive in anymore because it's something to do with like all of the stuff that comes out of a car the bad stuff that comes out in the car they're trying to keep it out of the cities so don't drive in the center of cities if you hire a car yeah to be honest traveling in england is hard no matter what you do it's hard sorry <laughs> it's, we don't have a good transport system our public transport isn't great everyone hates it to be honest and uh, it's often late and doesn't run on time um but that's a separate that's a separate podcast i think separate podcast episode uh, so next episode i will resume talking about my holiday and hopefully i can stay a bit more on track but uh yeah i do like to talk to you about things in england and explain some things as and when i can until next time bye bye have you ever googled your own name prepare for a shock because your personal info including addresses and phone numbers is all out there it's all harvested by data brokers and sold legally Aura is a personal digital security service that scans the internet for your sensitive information and provides a full suite of privacy-enhancing tools. For a limited time, Aura is offering listeners a 14-day free trial at Aura.com slash safety. That's A-U-R-A dot com slash safety to learn more and activate the 14-day trial period. Have you ever Googled your own name? Prepare for a shock because your personal info, including addresses and phone numbers, is all out there. It's all harvested by data brokers and sold legally. Aura is a personal digital security service that scans the internet for your sensitive information and provides a full suite of privacy-enhancing tools. For a limited time, Aura is offering listeners a 14-day free trial at Aura.com slash safety. That's A-U-R-A dot com slash safety to learn more and activate the 14-day trial period.